but I've had you in my mind all the time. And I can assure you, I have been working 24-7 on the very mission you assigned me to undertake. I am grateful for all of you, your support. I'm grateful for your resilience, your steadfastness, and your determination to write the last chapter of this story. And I can assure you with all certainty and fortitude, you are going to be the author of your own destiny. First, in honor of all those who've laid their lives for our homeland, in honor of all those who've been wounded in the battlefield across Ambazonia, those families that have been killed those who died in the arson by the occupier in the Kumba General Hospital, I will invite all of you across the globe from ground zero to join me and let us observe a minute of silence in their honor. May the souls of the de departed rest in perfect peace. My fellow soldiers of the revolution, soldiers in the Kondengi Maximum Security Prison, those locked up in Duala, those locked up in Bamenda, Boya, and those locked up across places we will never know. I want to honor you on behalf of the Ambazonian people for your sacrifices. Let me assure you the pain you are going through, the trauma, the scars left on your body, the ones we will never see, your battered soul, the pain in your families. Let me assure you, this pain will not be in vain. Be rest assured that even despite the sense of anarchy and confusion, the Ambazonian revolution is very strong is built on the foundation of determination, on the foundation of hope, fueled by the blood of all those who've left us, the General Amigos, the General Ivos, the Fiangos, and all those whose name will be tacked in our cemetery of determination. For all of you locked up in the jails of Cameroon, I want you to look back and be reminded of the journey we have made thus far. The Ambazonia you left is not the same. We have made progress, enormous strides. As we said from the beginning, our job as we define was to make sure Ambazonia becomes a recognizable name across the globe, that we were able to be recognized as a people under subjugation. We define a strategy, a strategy that was based on our understanding of the geopolitical realities which we live under, on the nature of the beast that we were facing. We understood the actors in Yaoundé, they believe in the fact that time always works in their favor. We were conscious of the silence and conspiratory nature of the international community. We understood the nature of international law, humanitarian and treaty laws. 
So we define a strategy that brought together all of these understandings. We knew the neighbors around us were not for us. But we understood the peoples around us were also oppressed people. And like every oppressed people across the globe, when each oppressed people rise up, they rise up not only on behalf of themselves, but on behalf of other oppressed people across the globe. We built a strategy for the liberation of Ambazoni. One that was based on making the territory ungovernable. Because as I have said repeatedly, occupation is predicated on political governance and control. Once you take away the incentive of political governance and control, the occupier loses interest. Because of that strategy, we also understood that the occupation was maintained by brute force. We took on the fortified fortresses of the regime. We didn't attack the bees because it was not easy to attack the police. We wanted to send a message that if we were prepared to lay our lives to challenge the fortresses of the bees, then the gendarmes will be of no match. The army will not be a match. The police will not be a match. We stood up like valiant soldiers. We shattered the myth around their invincibility. We humbled them on our battlefields. We made our battlefields. We didn't present to them a battlefield because we understood our weaknesses. We understood our strength that we were masters of the geography. We were masters of our terrain. Though ill-equipped, the determination, the cause we had gave us the spirit to challenge the most fortified military within our own system. But first, we gave our soldiers the desire, the understanding why they should fight. We didn't give them guns. We gave them beliefs. We gave them understanding. We gave them hope. We gave them determination. With all of these weapons, they were willing to present their bodies in the battlefield to defend the homeland. The integrity of the Ambazonian people, their villages, their lives, their country. We gave them a reason to fight. They could use any kind of weapon to fight because they believe in our cause. They believe in Ambazonia. They believe in the dream that we will build a country better than the one they live in. They believe very strongly that even if they die, their children will inherit a better place. They will be quick to the next generation something better than was ever given to them. Those were the weapons we gave them. My fellow countrymen and women, our strategy will go down in history as the finest strategy ever put in place by an oppressed people, outnumbered, outgone, and outresourced, to fight an impeccable regime supported by Western allies. We also believe very strongly that because Ambazonia produces more than 60% of the GDP, it was important that we increase the cost of the occupation. It was important that we make it more expensive for Cameroon to control Ambazonia. That is why we engage in economic sabotage. That is why we made sure it was more costly for them to penetrate our villages. We shut down our economy. But we did it in a way that didn't affect our people negatively to a certain extent. So we balance inflicting pain on the occupier with making sure our people can still live a decent life under the resistance. We thought through these strategies. 
It was a people-oriented strategy to be able to counter the system and to make Ambazonia a stakeholder in their own liberation. We also believed that we had to conduct ourselves with dignity and honor. If we were to avoid being tagged as terrorists, being tagged as kidnappers, we needed a code of conduct. A code of conduct that responded to international humanitarian law, that respected even the rights of our adversaries, that gave our people an understanding on how to conduct yourselves even under oppression. We made sure soldiers were disciplined. There was command and control. There was political education. There was human rights education. Soldiers knew the enemy. They knew the enemy. We trained them to know the enemy. That even though we may disagree amongst ourselves, the real enemy was the one that stared in your faces with unmistakable reality. We understood that any mistake we make and our revolution is stuck as a rat tack anarchist revolution, we were going to lose international support. And if we lose international support, that will be the end of our revolution. The world does not have any appetite for the creation of new states. Because if precedence is anything to go by, South Sudan was chaotic. And the world had no appetite for the creation of any post-independence system that was going to cost the international system in terms of trade, in terms of international terrorism. Don't forget Ambazonia is in the ambit of the Gulf of Guinea. Massive movement of resources, a chaotic and long revolution is going to impair the movement of resources, is going to impair trade, is going to cause humanitarian disaster that is going to affect international peace and security. And if you do not conduct yourself to respect international humanitarian law and human rights law, you will not win the support of the international system. We understood this and we factored these realities in the formulation of the strategies that was going to project us as victims of a 57-year-old system that has raped our mothers, exploited our resources to build a large army that has ravaged our cities, burned down villages. We conducted ourselves to give understanding to the international system that we were the first democracies in Africa who understood the value of tolerance, the value of the transition of authority without chaos. We conducted our system based on the Anglo-Saxon system of tolerance, due process, the respect for differences in opinion and the respect for each other's integrity. Those were the underlying moral principles that guided our revolution. It created excitement amongst our people. Even when we disagreed, we marched together, we fought together, we went to jail together, we supported the refugees together, we cried together, we spoke together. We stood like one people under the sun facing the same enemy, prepared to die for all those who have given their lives for a country that has been exploited, tarnished, attacked. We stood like valiant soldiers of the revolution knowing that the stakes were too high for us to personalize the struggle, to engage in deceit and manipulation, extortion, kidnapping for ransom. We understood the stakes were just too high for the Ambazonian people, surrounded by brutal neighbors and international conspiratory system that didn't have the best interests of our people at heart. We conducted ourselves with the pain and anguish, but with dignity and honor, knowing we don't want to behave in the same way like the occupying system that has occupied our land for 57 years. We didn't want to pay Cameroonians in the same coin that they've paid us. We didn't want to treat all those who've hated us with impunity. We wanted to respect their dignity, their right to their own existence. We wanted to trust in their own inalienable right to live in the land of their own birth. 
we conducted ourselves knowing we will not be here tomorrow. That if we believe that this land, we have to be quick to the next generation. We have to be objective. We have to keep ourselves aside. We have to project the Ambazonian aspiration above our own personal interests. Ambazonians, you fought a good fight. You've laid your lives for a good cause. And if history is anything to go by, if it's written by victors and the vanquished, your names, your endeavors, your sacrifices will be written on the footnote of Ambazonia. As a people who rose up against all odds in the same spot that the BBC Mancho were kidnapped, the Tatingo were ravaged, the Benji tortured, the Nelson battered, the Ayuk Tabe kidnapped, the Patasans then forced ravaged. You stood on that same spot to defy all odds, to stand for homeland, to give your lives for hope, for honesty, transparency, for people. On behalf of our people, I want to thank you very much from the depth of my heart. And I want to apologize to you for all our iniquities, for all the things we've done wrong. I want you to trust in our vision. The vision that we must today fight as one people, battered, deprived of homeland. We must fight as a people whose existence is threatened. We must fight as a people who have the last chance on planet Earth to define their own lives, write their own stories, focus their own history, develop their own policies. We must rise up like one people battered and think about all those whose liberties have been taken. We have to think about all those whose lives have been lost. The mothers, the children, hunkered down in the hinterlands not knowing when to go back to school. We must trust that their sacrifices should never be in vain. We must believe in the refugees in no man's land in Nigeria whose lives are still being haunted. If truly we are fighting for them, we must keep self aside and project the spirit of the Ambazonian revolution. Visualize as a people's revolution from bottom up approach. That is our only hope to survive. Today I want to wish General RK happy birthday. RK, thank you for your sacrifices. But I have these words for you. You're one year older today, you're lucky to be alive. You must conduct yourself with dignity. You must respect international humanitarian law. You must treat your soldiers with respect. You must train your gun against the real enemy of our people. You must lead with honor. You have been given another chance. Amigo never had that opportunity. Our bravest general, General Ivo, never had that opportunity. Every soldier on the ground, you must know who the real enemy is. La République du Cameroon. And all the other internal foes who collaborate with them, the enablers, who want to domesticate our struggle again. Let me, on behalf of our people, send you this unmistaken warning. Ambazonia is not for sale. Ambazonia is not a lab where political philosophies and theories are tested. We are an oppressed people. And other international law, every oppressed people have a right under the sun to seek external self-determination. And we, the Ambazonian people, will never coexist with Cameroon again. So all enablers crisscrossing the globe to try to placate our people to return back into servitude, you will face the justice of the Ambazonian people. Let me send you this warning. We will never go back under servitude. My fellow Ambazonians, 
despite the gains we have made. Despite the gains we have made, we can still lose this revolution. We can lose this revolution. A revolution is not a walk in a park. It's not an experiment. It is not pay as you go. A revolution is a difficult endeavor. A revolution is a task not meant for the faint-hearted, for the sprinters. It is meant for brave hearts, for marathonists who understand the stakes are high. We have messed up with our revolution. We have invested a lot of time. We've invested a lot of blood in this revolution. We've invested a lot of energy and resources in this revolution. And we will not allow this revolution to be hijacked. Every Ambazonian has a place. Every Ambazonian who believe in independence has a role to play in this revolution. In our Father's kingdom, there are so many mansions and there is one for every Ambazonian who believes in the liberation of homeland. I weep for Ambazonians. I weep for my homeland that you allow yourselves to be manipulated day in, day out by the weak, feeble, gullible-minded, those who exploit your vulnerability to project authority over you, the unelected bosses who are unsure how to conduct themselves in a revolution. You have learned your lesson. You have learned your lesson. My fellow citizens, you must be on guard. You must be on guard. Not everyone who sings independence believes in independence. Not everyone who talks Ambazonia believes in Ambazonia. Not everyone who talks liberation believes in liberation. Not everyone who talks about freedom of homeland believes in the freedom of homeland. If you do not even believe in the freedom of your own comrade, whom you know, whom you appreciate, you cannot believe in the freedom of an abstract political entity which you don't understand. Be on guard, Ambazonians. You have been deceived for too long. You have been manipulated for too long. You have been forced to rise up against the real patriots who stand for you, who batted for you, bled for you, who forged ahead for you. You've led yourselves to be manipulated by a few who have hijacked your revolution and turned it into an experiment for themselves. I hear you, some of you say this revolution cannot be led by pastors. No, it can be led by pastors. Martin Luther King Jr. was a pastor. Reverend Jesse Jackson was a pastor. So it can be led by pastors with dedication to the revolution. A vision about where they want to lead you to. Empathy for your sacrifices and suffering. Everyone can lead this revolution. But they must have the integrity to speak the truth. To stand for you, but for you. And to be able to develop policies and strategies that are time tested. And cut across time and space. Everyone has the capacity to lead the revolution. It can be led by priests. John Paul II, who stood against Nazi occupation of Poland, was the Pope of the, Vatican, of the Roman Catholic Church. He stood up. He fought for justice. He rose against tyranny. He spoke the truth. He believed in the liberation of Poland. He stood for humanity. Trade union leaders have fought for revolutions. Street workers have fought for revolutions. Every Ambazonian is equipped with the talent, the capabilities, the foresight to lead our revolution. But they must be imbued with the special qualities 
with a vision that is built on the foundation of truth, on the foundation of an impeccable truth. You've been deceived for too long. It has cost the lives of our people. Amazonians, there is a day of reckoning for each and every one of us. We will give account of our stewardship, of what we have done for our people. The records are there. We will be the ultimate judge. But going forward, we will take a tough stance. A very tough stance because if we don't, we are going to lose. The Syrian revolution failed. The Syrian revolution failed, my people. It didn't fail because they didn't fight enough, because they weren't defiant enough. It didn't fail because they didn't have a cause. It failed because greed took over love for country. It failed because deception took over love for country. It failed because stopgap tested policies took over strategic vision for the liberation of homeland and the building of post-independence countries. So you can fail. This is not a political campaign, Ambazonians. This is a liberation struggle. It's not about those you love. It's about those you trust. It's not about your friends. It's about those with whom you can fight together, go to jail together, die together, believe in the same set of freedom together. It's not about those who appoint you. It's about those with whom you can work together, trust in one another, believe in their capabilities to liberate homeland. You will have the chance as a free people to determine the quality of leaders to govern you. We set an example in Africa when we became the first democratic country. They elected the prime minister, removed him from power and elected another one. We must set a good example on how we construct a government, on how we build accountability systems. We must set a good example for the future. What you want tomorrow, you must demand it today. You can gloat over illegalities today because you simply want to become a free country. They will haunt you for the rest of your lives. I trust in your abilities, countrymen and women. The blood you've shed in homeland, the sacrifices you've made shows that you can rise up against all the obstacles that have been placed in our revolution. You can rise up against all those who want to hijack our revolution, blackmail patriots and attack the integrity of all those who are sacrificing, who are investing in our struggle. I want to announce to you today, I promise to you, Amazonians, that Amazonia will become a contender. I made this promise to you, that what we need to do was to make Amazonia a contender. I want to thank the leadership of the Amazonian Governing Council, the Vice President, Come Depp, FinDep, NSA, all the executive members, the spokes lady, the peers and the others, the defense chair and all those who've worked tirelessly, the SG chief of staffs, all these great patriots, top advisors, trusted and the others, woman of God, man of God, and all those who spend sleepless night. I want to announce to you today. We have been able to successfully make Amazonia an international contender by securing people's countries that are able to bat for us. The Vice President of the Amazonian Governing Council will be speaking to the Amazonian people. The Amazonian Governing Council have mandated the Vice President to reach out to other stakeholders of our revolution to bring them together in this understanding. It will remain classified. It will remain classified. But you can be sure we will become a free people. Because as we promise, the day the international system recognizes us as a contender, we become a stakeholder 
in the negotiation for the termination of the occupation. And that has happened. Because of careful planning, targeted diplomacy, the executive of the Ambazonian Governing Council has directed the Foreign Secretary and the Secretary for Targeted Di Diplomacy to redefine the targeted diplomatic approach. They have done so and they have been working tirelessly in the past few months to achieve the monumental successes that we have made. Ambazonia is now an international contender. It is known by its name. It is being spoken to. But I want all of us to speak as a people. That is why the Vice President of the Ambazonian Governing Council will be the political leader to speak to all the other stakeholders of our revolution. I know the first meeting has taken place and will continue to talk in the background to make sure all of us can gain the fruit of this milestone achievement. Other successes are in the pipeline. So we must know how to coordinate ourselves. But we will not work with traitors. We will not work with traitors. We will not work with people who believe in chaos in our revolution. We will bring together all those who believe in independence. It doesn't matter within which group that you operate in. We will work together, bond together, to be able to speak for Ambazonia with one voice. We have developed a compromise strategy, an impeccable compromise strategy. Consultations are ongoing about this strategy. It will be based on compromises. It will compromise with Morris, it will compromise with the SCYL, will compromise with the Southern Cameroon's Women's Movement, it will compromise with SCAPAC, it will compromise with Seseko Ayuk Tabe, it will compromise with all the major formations of our revolution. It will make sure that all of these groups are able to make some concessions for us to bond together at this last stage of our revolution. I can assure you with certainty that it's going to work. I can assure you with what I know, what I have seen, we are very close. Ambazonia is an international contender. Ambazonia is an international contender. But we also need to make sure Ambazonia is a contender on the ground. That is why in the past two months, two powerful ladies have launched the defense project to make sure we can save the lives of our people, to make sure we can save the lives of our soldiers on the ground. Two powerful ladies in our revolution in the past two months have been able to do what the men have not been able to do. My fellow countrymen and women, we should make Ambazonia a contender on the ground. Save the lives of our fighting men and women. Protect our vulnerable refugees. Protect our citizens on the ground. In this regard, I invite all of you to join the project of replacing the Dingons. We have gone very far in that in the past two months. I can assure you. We have been working very hard. I also want to let you know the Defense Alliance is emerging. The Coalition for the Defense of the Homeland is emerging. We have been able to bring together the most powerful defense groups on the ground. And I am inviting every other defense group that believes in the independence of our homeland, that believes in the respect for international humanitarian law. We will not accept groups that engage in kidnapping, extortion, that brutalize our people. 
all these groups will come together to form the coalition for the defense of Ambazonia. All of them will be supported. I have reached out to our compatriots in Boston, in Washington, across the globe, for us to talk about this. We are making huge progress. I understand what you see is the chaos of the moment. I understand what you see is the chaos at the construction site. There is hope, my people. There is hope. You know it is over when they start attacking your hospital. You know it is over when they round up girls and boys and march them on the streets of our country. You know it is over when CENTCOM, the United States Central Military Command, sits in front of policymakers and talk about the suspension of military cooperation. You know it is over when the United Nations Security Council talks about negotiations. You know it is over. We have to conduct ourselves with integrity. We have to conduct ourselves like a people with the vision to liberate, the vision to govern, the vision to stabilize post-independence homeland, the vision to develop policies that empower our people, make them better citizens than they are today. I also want to frown at the international community. It is not enough to suspend aid to Cameroon. It is not enough to criticize Cameroon's brutality on the ground. It is not enough to condemn the atrocities of the BR regime. I want to condemn the African Union, especially President Kagame. 24 years ago, the world said never again to genocide. We rose up against the genocide in Rwanda. 24 years after, it is sad that President Kagame is unable to speak out against the brutality and the genocide in our homeland. We condemn the brutality across Darfur in northern Nigeria and across Africa. But it is sad that Africa has not stood up to the test of time to condemn the brutality against our people. But we want to salute the courage of the African people who have stood with us from Patrice Lumumba to the former president of Ghana and all those who have spoke for us, spoken for us. I want to thank them. We should remind South Africa that while we grew up, we fought against the apartheid system. We resisted the apartheid system. We fought for the South Africans. We believe in the liberation of South Africa. We fought for the liberation of Nelson Mandela. We want to believe South Africa will stand for the liberation of Numvi Walters. We stand for the liberation of Tassan. We stand for the liberation of Dr. Mfor. We stand for the liberation of our people dotted across the jails of Cameroon. Ambazonia, this is our last fight. This is the fight of our life. The fight to determine the future of our country. The ownership of our country. We can't make silly mistakes. We can't make try and errors. We must be ready at this particular moment to conduct ourselves like people who are facing the highest threat from not only Cameroon, also from Nigeria and other countries. Dear citizens, I want to thank all of those in the diaspora. You've not given up. You still have hope. You can see that in social media feeds. You can see that our people yearn for freedom when they write. You can, you can hear them on audios when things are going bad. You can feel their pain when they feel like we are losing. You can feel their frustration when they feel like we are having setbacks. You can feel their anger almost tangible when you find the bodies of our young men and women 
on the streets of Ambazonia. You can feel their frustration when they feel like leaders are not coming together to work together, to be able to strategize together. You know they believe in a homeland. Because I can assure you, if Ambazonia is not free, all of you will remain in exile. All of you will remain in perpetuity in exile. You will never have the chance to fly Air Amber to land at the Tico International Airport, to drive on the biggest highway from Tico to Boe, to be able to drive through Widukum to Bamenda without going through the western province of La Republic to Cameroon. You will miss the unique opportunity in your lifetime to have shaped your own destiny and bequeath to the next generation a better country than you inherited. That is why you must reject the chaos you must reject all those who have transformed our revolution into a laughing stock. You must reject all those who have taken our revolution as an experiment. You must be able to stand for the truth even if you are in the minority. That is how we have stood against the so-called majority for 57 years to be able to reach this moment when Ambazonia is recognized across the globe. A few of us stood up when the majority were still trapped in the mental captivity of Cameroon. Against all odds, we stood for Ambazonia. When we were told it was impossible, when we were told it was a white elephant project, we believed in ourselves, the justness of our cause, our abilities, and we looked into the examples of other peoples who fought against systems more powerful than they were. Believe in the Ambazonian revolution. Believe in the truth. Believe in justice, in transparency, in a strategy that works. Stand alone and walk to your grave with the majority. The silent majority believes in the truth. They have been hijacked by the abysmal catalog of abuses. By a few who have arrogated to themselves the power to govern during a liberation process who have misconstrued a liberation strategy to a governance approach. It has not worked. It will not work today. It will not work in the next 30 years. And Bazonians, if you want to remain in servitude, continue to allow yourselves to be treated like a captured people by the same people who, must, who should have developed a better strategy to liberate you. We are better off. We are more powerful more intelligent to be held captive by a few unknown persons who don't know exactly where they are headed to. Bazonia is the land of the brave, the warriors, the daredevils, those who bled for homeland, rose on the same spot on which they are laid their lives. We will not allow our revolution to be taken away from us. We are the people. We own this revolution. I want you to become part and parcel of your own liberation. That is the only way you can own the outcome. Fellow Ambazonians, we are on a good cause, but we've got work to do. If you want to own the oil refinery in Victoria, if you want Indian people to be able to determine how the crude that is extracted from Dian is going to be used. If you want the people of the state of Manu to have their international airport back, the name of Chief Ayamba to be remembered. If you want the Womb Area Development Authority to come back to life. If you want UNVDA of Ndop. If you want the Yoke Hydroelectricity Power Plant to come back to life, to power our economy. If you want the reign of Diboncha to be captured and redistributed within Ambazonia, to make sure you can still eat mangoes during the dry season. If you want to be able to drive on a secure highway from the Mongo right up to Bafaka. If you want one day for your vote to count, for a government to be based on your consent, to develop policies that make your own livelihood your interest. 
if you want to be able to plant cassava in Bengui and sell gari right over here in Europe. If you want your cocoa to be transformed into chocolate right there in your own country. If you want your coffee to be turned into powdered coffee right in your own homeland. If you want your educational system to be contextualized to make you an asset to your own society. If you want a legal system within which the English language will be the only language spoken in the court, where the right to habeas corpus is going to be fundamental in the way that we develop our constitution. If you want executive power to be controlled by the constitution, if you want a prime minister that will be questioned by parliament, whose policies will be debated in parliament, ratified in parliament, if you want a government of the people, for the people and by the people, you must fight like this is the last revolution of your life. You must invest like this is the last revolution of your life. You must reject all those who've turned your revolution into an experiment, who've turned this revolution into a national disgrace. You must remember all those in jail, those who have died, those still battling. If you want to have a beautiful country, if you want your children to be proud of you, to know that you contributed in the liberation of the 55th country of the state of the continent of Africa. If you want the world to queue up and know that the Ambazonian Revolution is a reference point from where all revolutions can be built, you must give your all now. You must fight now. You must believe in us now. You must believe in the strategies that have worked now. You must invest as though you are the stakeholder now. My fellow soldiers of the revolution, we have come a long way. I want to thank our mothers who are going through difficulties on the ground. I know most of you have asked many questions when they called the lockdown, what was my position? This is what I like to say. If anybody suspends the ghost town, I will come out and oppose it. If you call for Ambazonia to be locked down for one month, I will not make a public statement. I don't want us to begin another fight in public. I don't want it. I don't also want us to send wrong signals to our people. I may disagree with the policy position, but it will be wrong for me publicly to antagonize it. It will send the wrong signal. Now that we are going over with the lockdown, we must define strategies as leaders that do not inflict more pain to our people. We can call for a lockdown of Ambazonia for even six months. But we have an obligation to explain to our people the strategic reasons behind such a call. We must understand that the powers we have is derived from the people. It is judicious to explain policy positions. As far as I'm concerned, there was virtually no strategic reason. We have seen the outcome. It's a lesson learned, and I hope we will not repeat such mistakes again. Fellow soldiers of our revolution, I want to thank our soldiers on the ground. I want to thank all those who are bleeding. We are doing our utmost best to make sure we can provide you with what you need to stay alive, to defend our revolution, defend the lives of our people. Ambazonians must understand nothing good comes easy. The Eritreans fought for 30 years. Our revolution will be shorter because we have put in place a strategy that marries domestic and international understanding on how to conduct ourselves in a liberation struggle. That is the strategy that is going to free us. We will have to go through pain. Most, many of our people will lose their lives. But you can be rest assured that 
We will remember them. We will honor them. We will honor their sacrifices. It is only sad when our people lose their lives when we could have stopped such death. When our people die because of our mistakes, our carelessness, we will be held accountable. Fellow Ambazonians, the months ahead will be trying. The months ahead will also be promising because we will be up in the stakes on the ground and in terms of targeted diplomacy. We will be building the coalition for the defense of the homeland and we will be building the political coalition. As I indicated, the vice president of the Ambazonian Governing Council was given the mandate to begin consultations. I want to thank all of our supporters, my very top and able advisors, the Ambazonian people who have been praying for me, Pastor Asobo, woman of God, man of God, all the other warriors who have been praying for all of us, our soldiers in Johannesburg, in Cape Town, in South Korea, in China, in Brussels, in Germany, in Finland, in the United States. I want to thank you for your continuous dedication. We are indebted in gratitude for your sacrifices, and they will not go in vain. God bless you all. God bless the Ambazonian Revolution, and good night.